most of the companies will fail for many reasons, but one of the main reasons is going to be und uh, underestimating the scale-up factor of the hardware plan. So definitely keep an eye on that one. Hello everyone and welcome to Turn Off Turn On Ventures. Um, after one year uh, from the first message when I reached out to Nemanja um, on LinkedIn, I have finally uh, cycled here to Subotica in Serbia to visit 11S. Welcome Nemanja. Thanks for having me and it's uh, really great to hear that you've cycled all the way from Amsterdam to here. Yeah. It's a great achievement. You, Thank you. you show determination, <laughs> and that's what you need also to build a battery gigafactory. <laughs> Sounds like I have a role here in the future. <laughs> um, no, it, it's, it's my pleasure and it was also really exciting when I first heard about 11S, um, which honestly was one of the inspirations. I, I thought, wow, if they can do this in Serbia, I definitely have to put in the effort to, to come visit. Um, so let's kick off with an introduction of you know, who is 11S uh, and yourself, Nemanja, what do you do here um, in Subotica? I was actually born here, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I came back, I, I used to study in Belgrade and then in London, UK, and then I came back in 2011. Um, and I was working for one of our uh, basically family company, which uh, deals with uh, packaging for uh, FMCG and pharma. So um, we were doing some similar stuff that uh, it's also seen in the battery business. And uh, three years ago, uh, uh, several things happened, like uh, I bought a Tesla just mm -hmm. for fun. And then I saw, oh my God, this is going to change everything, how we drive, how we use cars and so on. And uh, I was also then uh, looking for a new opportunity, what, uh, what can be done after our successful M&A in the group. And um, we started the researching batteries because we saw that as a key enabler of the electric mobility. And also we realized there's not much happening in Europe. Remember this is 2019. Uh, even all the startups, even Northvolt was still in the low hundreds, if at all, in terms of people and, and in terms of reach. And uh, we were then doing a lot of uh, research and studying and saw that actually like a third or even, even more of the process is very similar to what we do. So um, we, thought, we thought, okay, let's just analyze the whole process and see if we could do something like that. And uh, a few months went by, we talked to a few potential customers and then suddenly we had a business case. And uh, after that, Corona started actually, about six months in. Um, and then we saw, okay, we have now time to recap. We have time to, to kind of uh, step back and see what, what can we research on, what can we do. And then we did a lot of research and a lot of uh, business modeling, a lot of Excel uh, calculating. And uh, we have uh, found out that the best way to go forward is a large scale prismatic LFP battery factory. So we decided to, to, to go into that direction. And here we are, uh, three years later, um, we're having a spin off from the industrial group. So it's technically a startup, but it's an it's a, it's a industrial spin off of the Alpha group. And uh, we are now a separate entity and um, we're still sharing some of the space and we're moving from next year to our new uh, mini pilot facility. Fantastic. Um, for those people who don't know much about the battery space, uh, maybe you can share what is LFP and what is a <coughs> giga factory versus a normal factory? Yeah, so most distinctions people make when they talk about batteries is their format general format. This includes the size, the form factor, like is it prismatic, is it cylindrical, is it pouch, and in our case it's prismatic. Um, the second thing, uh, which is one of the most important factors, is the cathode type. Battery consists of a cathode, of an anode, and of an electrolyte. I also like to add a separator as a fourth item, but it's not a necessary item. And um, the cathode and anode are basically positive and negative ends, and the ions flow in this electrolyte. So when you have a charge or discharge process, the electrons go through the current, through the current collector, the, out through the, to the wiring. And, um, and in this process, it, it, it basically determines the properties of the battery are determined through the cathode and the anode. And LFP is just one type of cathode. Uh, it's called lithium iron phosphate, therefore the LFP. And it's the second most dominant one in the world. 
uh, right now it's uh, it's according to Bloomberg going to be 40% of the market uh, NMC being around 50 so getting really close and all the other companies uh, are doing NMC cathode and uh, LFP will be basically the, the, sec the second largest one also in Europe and we will, it has its own uh, applications and advantages compared to NMC cathodes mm -hmm. and going to the Gigafactory um, yeah so Gigafactory is a term I think coined by Elon Musk um, who, who first did it in, uh, in his first uh, Giga Nevada it was, I think, 35 gigawatt hours in 2014. Um, yeah, basically, and at that time, by the way, I think the total world production of batteries was like 30 gigawatt hours. Um, so, yeah, a big achievement. And it's giga because of gigawatt hours, right? 10 to the power of 9 uh, watt hours. Um, and this is first type of that scale to produce batteries. And it's a pretty big factory. I mean make no mistakes it's a it's a it's a monster of its own so it's several hundreds of thousands of roof uh, area of square meters of roofed area and um, yeah you need a different level of operation to run such a factory mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's where I want to go to the to the next uh, part of my questions which is really what does it take to to build a factory um, what were your early considerations to say that hey a giga factory can be done here in Subotica in Serbia? Well, there are many things and many aspects you need to consider when you're thinking about a gigafactory. Um, and this is really, there are companies doing only that, selecting sites for, for large, large factories. It's not only about, oh, oh, I have a plot of land, there it is, so let's just build something. Um, you need to look at first the mi microeconomical situation, which is um, how is the city looking like next to it? How are the people? What's the employment rate? What's the technical readiness of people going into something uh, high tech? Uh, what is the infrastructure? So what is the current electricity, gas and other power inputs? Um, what, is, what is easy to build around it? What is the supply chain look like? So who do we have in the neighborhood? Uh, how is the country oriented towards this? What are the subsidies and so on? But also what is the political situation uh, in the whole uh, region? So all of this is, is influencing the decision. And then there's also some macro uh, elements, uh, which are basically you know, on a country and a European level, where the geofactory should be placed. Is it always cl close to supply or close to demand? Mm -hmm. It's always a question close to, to a customer or close to a supplier. And uh, we're somewhere in the middle, a uh, bit more closer to suppliers in, in our case, but also to, to several customers. Um, so yeah, this was all considered. And coincidentally, one of the lands we, we have bought in 2017 is perfect for Giga One, uh, which is already announced. So it's an 8 gigawatt hour plant. And this is going to be our first Giga scale operative factory. And after that, we're going to scale to a much larger scale. And we're actually going to search for a second site. Fantastic. Uh, it's, it's been a few years since the, the birth of the idea for 11S. And clearly, a lot has, has progressed since then. Uh, could you share with us maybe one of the the challenges that that have that you faced in these few years? Okay, building gigafactory is definitely not something you can <laughs> you can work on a part time basis. Yeah. It's not a part time job. <laughs> it's a it's 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 a massive massive endeavor. It's a massive change, and it's simply you're you're moving several tankers at the same time, uh, and and changing their direction by ninety degrees. Maybe not 180, but 90 for sure. And this is this is so demanding, and it, it starts from the technology itself. It's one of the most complex production processes in the world. There's more than 600 parameters you need to measure uh, just to have a good quality of battery. There's a, a intrinsic complexity when it comes to, to actually assembling the cell and actually bringing it to life as well. Um, so all this together is, is just one aspect, but then there's the macro aspect where you have all the uh, economical uh, investor, uh, macro political and all these aspects which you have to consider. So you're kind of, as a CEO, you tend or you want to be as much as in the product as possible, but actually half of the company is usually not the product itself, but it's all the supporting infrastructure around it. 
and um, this also means going to uh, well visiting investors visiting customers visiting mm -hmm. suppliers and so on so it's a it's a definitely a massive machine which needs to be run and um, I mean it's going pretty well I mean I must say uh, we're, we're quite happy with the progress but there is still a lot to be done and the most difficult part for all gigafactories in Europe we have to uh, have the product to deliver mm -hmm. and to deliver on budget and on time and I'm a, a little bit, uh, let's say, trying to be modest here, but we're trying to do that and we are still on budget and on time. I uh, hope it stays that way. Uh, but essentially, this is the, 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 I would say, the key differentiator. We are really technically driven yeah. and uh, we're really going into depth and, and, and actually enabling this yeah. as fast as possible transition. There's a huge wave of new climate tech um, coming in not just in a battery space, but across you know, different <coughs> fields. You have uh, water, you have soil, e everything can be a climate thing nowadays. And a lot of it uh, needs to be hardware uh, to, to actually have a positive impact on the climate. Yeah. Um, but as I can hear, hardware is hard. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what a lot of people say. Um, your hardware here is massive. So is there any one piece of advice you can give to other uh, climate hardware uh, uh, founders. Yeah, sure. Hardware is much more difficult to scale, and even in, in a software, if you get, if you build a good supporting infrastructure and if you actually make the architecture right, then it's just about it just it's mostly about sales and marketing. And here, it's it's actually you know running it every day and and getting making sure that you have all the material raw materials coming in all the machinery working and, and all that. So it's definitely an underestimated area. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the companies will fail for many reasons, but one of the main reasons is going to be un uh, underestimating the scale up factor of the hardware plan. So definitely keep an eye on that one. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. Um, we are gonna move from the, the hardware side of it, the technical hardware side of it to the also hardware, but the people side of it. Um, once again, I, I, I remember a year ago, I was like, <laughs> so many questions. First of all, LFP at that time, I, I think, you know, we, we saw the growth of LFP a year ago. Um, it was getting like a really exciting, uh, as a, a lot, there's a lot of excitement around LFP as a <clears> chemistry. <throat> but to say that someone is going to be building a gigafactory in Serbia was Kind of, kind of confused me almost. I was, how do you get, I don't know, thousands of people here to Subotica, to Subotica in Serbia to work at your gigafactory? So on the talent side, uh, could you share, you know, how did you build your first team and, and, and where do you see this, this growth of people coming into Subotica? Well, I, probably the second biggest challenge is actually this one with the, with the, with the people, um, apart from the technology and the hardware stuff and scale up of it. Um, yeah, so it started with a relatively small team and uh, it was, it was re I have like really funny stories uh, from the <laughs> beginning. So to, we, we, were, we were even researching science papers and seeing the names and then calling them all and then yeah. calling the friends <laughs> of their friends. And, uh -huh. and I, I like to say all seven people that know something about batteries in Serbia are working already with us. Uh -huh. um, uh, so it's, it's, it's a small community, but we really literally researched the whole um, I would say surrounding countries uh, battery space and there was not much but it's also a good future for all um, electrochemical uh, engineers electrochemists uh, even mechanical engineers electrical engineers chemical engineers and similar similar professions there is a really huge future here and we're trying on one side to reskill some people or to upskill their, their their current knowledge and on the other side we're actually uh, hiring from abroad so we have already passed the 15 nationality marker. So we are a team of still under 100, I, I would say actually around 50 uh, in total. And we have already 15 nationalities, so you can imagine the diversity. The language is already English by, by, by most daily discussions. So all that together, and it, it also takes time. So to scale up the people part, it simply takes time. And this is something you cannot buy completely. You just have to deploy that, that that learning curve and so the whole so europe is struggling we in subotica i mean 
the weather is cool in summer. In winter, you, you can go also skiing if you want somewhere in the area. So it's it's like a, um, it's a good mix of, of, of climate. It's a good mix of a, of a medium-sized city. And there are two capitals of two countries within two hour drive. So it's a, it's a nice community, but definitely it, it requires uh, dedication, motivation uh, for the people to come. And probably the biggest motivating factor is the, the, they like the, what we are doing. They like the product, they like the management style, and therefore they, they decide to join. Great. Um, so now we're going to go for a little walk around the space. And in the meantime, you're going to get to hear a bit more from the other people who work here at 11S. Um, so my so. name is Katarina. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer by background. So my name is Daria Arbuzova and um, I'm first international in 11S. The kids do not dissolve lithium in water. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>